Yeah, it's Thursday and we got another video up and that was the goal. Uh, that's the goal of the year is to push more YouTube. But the reason why I'm pushing this video so fast is because Infrared Outdoor dropped three optics last week. Uh, you guys already seen the Mark 1 V2. Uh, we have here uh, the uh, Rico Mark II, this is the RH50R, and also the Hybrid 75. Uh, I was gonna do the Hybrid 75 before this, but um, I, I gotta be honest with you, there's a lot of excitement in me right now about this optic, and that's what we're gonna talk about. So if you're that guy in the comment section that just complains about me talking, I can tell you right now you're not gonna like this video. I have to talk about this optic. I can't just show the kills, I just can't show the video because a lot of people are not gonna understand what they're looking at. You're gonna look online, you're gonna look at the specs, you're gonna be full of questions. So I'm gonna do my best to answer those questions before the comment section gets full of them, all right? So uh, enough of me talking, let's get to it. Uh, we're gonna start with the rear of the optic here. Uh, this is an eyepiece I've never seen before. Um, it, if you look through the um, RS75, you're gonna get that same type of feel, uh, similar eye relief with it, big eyepiece, uh, great visibility looking through the optic. It's not tight, it's a really big eyepiece. Uh, but what's different about it is the uh, throw lever. This is, oh, by the way, this is an orthoscopic eyepiece. Okay, that's what they called it. Uh, but uh, what makes what separates it from the other optics um, is the throw lever. Uh, this is your magnification right here, and I was going to get a close-up video of it, but uh, I don't want to move the camera around. But there is a throw lever here. That is your magnification. Uh, on the older models, we've always had the up and down button to go through our magnification. It's digital zoom. Uh, this is digital zoom as well, but it's a fine-tuned digital zoom. Um, <laughs> Again, I've never seen this before. So uh, a three to 12 optic, okay, at uh, down to uh, base three power, I would be able to go in 0.1 increment. So now I can go to 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5, all the way up to 12 power, which is phenomenal for me because uh, there's been plenty of times where I've been behind a three by and it jumps up to six power uh, or maybe four, whatever. Um, I don't need that much extra magnification. Sometimes I wanna get in between that a 3.5 or a 3.2. Uh, now you can fine-tune that so when you go up in your magnification You will see it in the display and you will see it go up and down. You might see it here in this video I'm not sure I, I, I played with the magnif magnification too much, uh, but it is really slick So next up is the mount uh, the mount is pretty slick. It's got dual throw levers um, I flipped it um, because I'm on a bolt action right now. Uh, it worked just fine on my Badger, but that has a 60 degree throw. It's a little bit different. Uh, if you're on an AR, it's not gonna be an issue, but if you plan on putting this optic on your bolt action, uh, just know that you can just remove two screws out from the bottom of your optic, flip it around, and you're gonna have the clearance for your bolt handle, and it's gonna operate just fine. I have zero issues with it on my bolt guns. Um, Another thing that I want to talk about real quick is the lens cover. Uh, this is something that I usually take off all my optics. Uh, I guess I'm just a little careless with my objectives, but I hate lens covers. I always feel like uh, it's happened where I shot the rifle and the lens cover closed. Uh, couldn't see what was going on. Thought something was going on with my scope and I looked down and my damn cover's on. Uh, this is pretty cool. Check this out. It'll flip open. Uh, it flips open and it wants to snap on the other side. It won't snap shut, but it's, there's a magnet on the other side and it wants to grab that cap. It's also spring-loaded, check that out. I have yet to have this lens cover uh, wanna, wanna close on its own. It stays off to the side. Also, if you wanna run some type of external battery source, which I doubt you have to, or you wanna charge it on the other side here, um, which I wish I could show, it's kinda hard to see, but, um, there is a Type C uh, port over here uh, if you want to if you want to charge it, and there's also a magnetic uh, charging port as well. Also, that's magnetic is the eye cup. Uh, I despise eye cups. I don't care what scope it is and who it's from. I usually take it and I go 
I throw it out of the way. Uh, but this one is magnetic. Um, they've glued them. Uh, they've uh, just had a little deal that just kind of went around the ring and they always fell off. Uh, this one is magnetic and I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it's pretty legit. Uh, but eye cups are 100% useless for me. To the inside of the scope, it is a 2560 by 2560 display. Massive. It's a big, big display. Uh, but the thing that really caught my attention when I fired this thing up was the frame rate. It's a 60 hertz. And uh, I know you've heard 60 hertz plenty of time in the past from me and other people in the industry and, and other optics. And it, at the end of the day, it really never felt like a true 60 hertz. It almost felt like a 50, you know? Um, this is the first time I've actually seen a really quick frame rate. And I truly believe this is a 60 hertz uh, frame rate. Uh, it is, it's, it's extremely fast. Um, I know some people are already trying to compare it to other optics as, as, um, from iRay as far as the display. And I can tell you guys right now, um, I cannot compare this to anything else available through iRay. Um, the 1280 is, is in a league of its own, uh, but this optic here is so crisp uh, that sometimes I, I question if it's a, a, a 640. Uh, but it is a 640. Uh, the video output is good. Uh, the audio is phenomenal. Uh, I remember uh, talking to one of the engineers last year. They were asking me how I was getting my audio. I told him I put the uh, iPhone in my back pocket. And um, I said, you know, if we can get audio that's equivalent to the iPhone, I said, it'll be great. It'll be a huge move. Nobody else in the industry is doing that. Audio will be king. This came out about eight months later and the audio is phenomenal, folks. I'm not gonna hype it up. When you listen to this, when you see the kill videos and you hear that impact on those animals uh, from 40 yards all the way out to 150 yards, it's very telling. I want to do a close-up video here um, and just show you guys exactly how this throw lever works. Extremely smooth. Here's the battery lever. Super easy to remove. Magnetic snaps up in there could be a little bit stronger, but that's gonna work just fine And we got the LRF here, which might get out of focus. So I'll try to get it in focus here All right, there is the LRF Real slick there Don't even know what's on there Okay, we got the opposite side here. Here's the throw levers Here's the type C it's underneath this, and if you want, you can run a magnetic battery port here that just magnetically attaches here. And then we have the lens cover, snaps in place, snaps on the side. Pretty slick. And I might start running it that way, it actually makes more sense for me. Pretty slick.
he's leaking. Yeah. Busted him. something right Was that legit or what? Um, it speaks for itself. I don't have to stand here and hype it up, okay? Um, I truly believe that this is gonna be um, Infrared Outdoors number one seller this year. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. And um, I'm gonna continue to use it. Unfortunately, I do have to use other optics and I have to bounce back and forth, but um, it's definitely in the top five of my favorite optics from Infrared Outdoor. Uh, if you guys would like to see a video like that, my top five favorites, just briefly going through why I like them, uh, we could do a video on that because I can tell you right now, 
the RH50R is definitely gonna be on that list. So if you guys are ready for an upgrade, you got a 384 or 640 that's outdated, or you want something with a range finder, or you want something with a faster refresh rate, or you want better audio, you cannot go wrong with the RH50R. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't have to talk about this anymore. Uh, folks, I appreciate all your patience. I know these videos can get dragged out sometimes and I'm not doing it on purpose. Uh, there is a lot of folks out there that have a lot of interest in these optics. So I have to share that information, I have to. Uh, but there's still gonna be some comments. There's gonna be some questions. And if you have questions, please ask them and I will do everything I can to answer those questions. In the meantime, folks, I'm gonna be working on another video, hopefully the Hybrid 75 video. Uh, it's another optic that I do like, I like it a lot. This one's in the top five, and my Hybrid 75 is in the top five. We will get to that soon. I don't know when, uh, but we'll get to that soon. And um, whew, got a lot of work to do. I will see you guys in the next video.